Okay, welcome to Lower Painting Live, uh, Saturday Night Edition. There we go. I have this light. I don't even really think I need it because it's so freaking bright in here already. But you know. Anyway, welcome everybody. Um, I am glad to see you all doing well. You probably can't see me on this stupid phone. Maybe you can see me now. Anyway. So here we are for another live show. I'm going to do a trout pattern tonight. I worked on this today. It's been quite the week. Got a house full of sick, sick people, except for me. So, <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, we've been spending a lot of time in the house. And you think that would mean I got a tremendous amount of work done, but not really because um, I've got my kids 24 seven here. Um, there's no, well, they took school off on Tuesday because they were sick and then we had school canceled on, well, they wouldn't have gone anyway because they were sick, but, uh, Wednesday and Thursday school was canceled for weather. So they've been home many days. So mom needs a break and it's not happening today or tomorrow. So let's hope for Monday. It's been quite the, yeah. Quite the interesting sickness. It was. It's been really bad. My kids have been like miserable. So we're hoping they get on the mend. I think things are looking up, but we'll see. So I hope everybody else is staying well. All right. So we're gonna do a stalker trout tonight, and um, we're gonna do it on a tiny clash ko. Uh, yes, yes. Correct, John. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You threw the tiny flash. It is. I heard that um, they swim pretty much the same as the original, the KOs. So um, that's awesome because I haven't had a chance to really take them out because they just, I just started painting them like in the winter here. So um, I had to rely on what other people said about them. So that's great to hear from somebody I trust as well on my own page. Hi, mom and dad. I'm nursing sick kiddos, so it's been uh, it's been a week. Um, all right, let's go ahead and get started. I'm gonna go ahead and pin. Yeah, please do share the feed. Um, makes a huge difference when you guys share the feed as to how many people actually watch um, the show. Both, you know, this is posted after um, this. The, I post everything after the show i'm trying to copy this it's not working this doesn't want to work come on really i'm trying to um copy and paste the discount code and it's not loving it's not loving me today come on okay there we go um so anyway this will be posted after the show so if people want to watch it tomorrow and they see you post it on your page they can go tomorrow and watch it after the fact. So never hurts to share. Yes, mom and dad pop in usually. I don't know if they stay long, but they usually they usually watch, watch at least for a little bit. They're enjoying, oh my God. They're enjoying sunny Florida. While we, it was actually pretty nice today. I did take the dog for a walk. She has to get out of here or she'll go crazy. Um, so I did take the dog for a walk and it was really nice out. It was like in the mid fifties, but um, it was super cold the last two days. Like it was in most of the United States, uh, but everybody was sick. So it didn't really matter here. I don't know how I always manage not to get sick. I, I don't know. Like I just have Somehow, usually, I'm the one who gets away with from these things unscathed. So here's what I'm doing right now. We're doing a stalker trout pattern. Everybody keeps asking me about them. And uh, I keep a lot, seeing a lot of people posting about wanting stalker trout patterns on various pages. So I thought... I would do, and it's interesting because the trout that we stock at our lake here are not, they don't look anything like the, the uh, ones when you Google 
or the ones that uh, show up on like the other brand name swim bait patterns, they're much darker. Because we actually have a um, fishery here and um, they have the trout in these like, they're like these four, like these long skinny runs. Or um, and you can go feed them. It's kind of cool actually in the spring before they're all gone. And they're very dark. They're almost like, they're like a really dark blackish green. And then they have uh, almost like a purple, like a darker purple stripe. Uh, but for whatever reason, maybe when they go in the water, in the deep water, they get lighter. So, um, I guess they do kind of, when they get bigger here, they do tend to be lighter. So. We're going to do a light trout. Okay. That's what I'm saying. It's not, it, so here's the deal. They have a lot of spots, right? I posted a reference photo. There's lots of spots, but they're pretty light in color in general. So we're going to do a light pattern, lots of spots, a little bit of pink on the cheek and just right along the middle. So we're going to start. I just did a little bit of white over top. I actually primed these with lacquer paint. And I'm not going to paint with lacquer paint without a mask on. So I reverted back to my Createx paints. So I, the reason why I put another coat of white over it is because um, when you paint over top of lacquer paints with water-based paint, it tends to beat up a little bit. So I'd rather get like a base coat over top before I, um, he is not going to spray paint spray paint in here right now. Please, God, tell me. He is spray paint in here right now. Okay, so anyway, um, it will beat up a little bit, and I didn't want it to do that, so I put a coat of white over top. Normally, I use Steinol Res Primer, and then I do a white base coat when I'm doing uh, my show, but that's the reason why I didn't do that. I already had... Um, I had already primed that earlier today with the other batch. So I am going to have some of these in stock. They will probably sell fast. Um, I probably didn't do enough. So if I run out, just PM me and I'll, I'll paint you one, okay? I never know what patterns are going to sell. So I don't want to paint like 100 billion and then, you know, it's not the color, right? So I'd rather test the waters. I can always do more. It doesn't take that long for me to get more in there. So I'm just going to line this up. This is just over the plain white. I'm just gonna line it up as close to the um, bait as I can. A good genetics program in Pueblo for trout. That is good to know. I don't know too much about, like, I know enough, a little, but not, not a lot. Like I knew, Chris knew a guy who was a, one of the fish biologists for a while here, but he's not there anymore. And he knows, um, sort of knows Carrie, who runs the program. But, of course, we don't know anything about the actual process. But they do breed, um, We they do um, hatch a lot of trout here, and then they go all over the state, is my understanding. So... There's plenty of trout, lake trout in the lakes here and the rivers. Well, not lake trout and rivers, but there's trout all over, rivers and lakes. So, um, so basically, this is the larger um, trout dot pattern from Whitmore Farms. He sells, I think, that Sugar Tick Custom Lures sells these on his website now. Otherwise, you can go to Whit Whitmore Farms' website, and he sells a trout pattern. So they come like this in a sheet, and it's serrated down the middle, and it's two different size spots. So you can get the big and the little. So for the little tiny clash, because we have um, the KO comes in a small version, okay, which is 4.5-inch body, and then the tail adds a little bit more length, um, not maybe like a less than an inch. 
So it, there's a smaller version, and then there's the regular tiny clash, which is what I'm painting here. So for the little one, I'd use this size, and then for the bigger one, I'd use this size. Um, or you can mix them together, too. You can do a little mixture of smaller ones and bigger ones. Whatever floats your boat. But I do think it's a really natural-looking dot pattern, and um, I use it all the time when I'm doing trout. It's the best one that I've found anyway. I'm sure um, there may be others out there, but I, I don't know of them, if there are. So I don't work for anybody. I'm just telling you what I what I like, basically. Um, you could make your own, obviously, too, if you wanted to take the time to draw it out and um, cut it. I, I think this is a little, some of these are a little more detailed than I want to try to do myself. Some of these, like, I would just rather pay, like, 20 bucks or whatever just to get this stencil because it comes in, like, a really thick mill. It's, like, 12 mil, which is, like, the thickness of the pencil material. And he has a laser cutter, um, which are super expensive. But if you're going to buy it to sell stencils, you could make your investment back. But it's not, like, something that you just go out and buy. Um, and so like a Cricut or a Silhouette Cameo, it would be really, you could cut this out. You can, it's just kind of frustrating if you're, um, like if it doesn't stick to the pad and it moves while you're cutting it, then it's ruined and you have to start over and it's hard to get your blade settings right. Um, and you won't be able to cut something this thick very easily. So these, you can just soak them in cleaner. If you are using water-based paints, you can just soak them in a little bit of alcohol and then scrub them with a toothbrush um, and they'll come clean. Or if you're using like um, something that's not water-based, then you can just put soak them in thinner and um, they'll come clean. So they're definitely worth the money in my opinion, if you want um, to not have to do it yourself. Because <laughs> they last forever. So kind of like the Anarchy Models stencils, it's an investment, but it's definitely a worthwhile investment in my opinion. Just spend the money and get the texture stencils that are good. And then um, you can just keep cleaning and reusing them. So for like stripe patterns or all that stuff, I definitely would. Um, I did get your lip list done, Anthony. Yes, it is not clear coded, but I will do that tomorrow. Awesome. Thank you, Don, for the, the good feedback. Um, anyway. If I'm doing like a, like I said, if I'm doing like a bluegill pattern or if I'm doing um, a, a perch or something, I'll cut my own stripe pattern that I trace myself. But um, this kind of stuff is not, I just don't wanna, I don't wanna spend that much time on it. What is Chris spray painting? Some trim, he's just fixing some trim. Just a little tip shit. Okay, we are just doing not, I'm not like making these like uber, uber like super uber dark. I'm just um, getting them all over. So you're like thinking right about now, why would you put that many dots on? At the beginning, well, now I'm going to go over it with a pearl white. So I'm going to take this metallic white and I'm going to thin it down uh, and we're going to put some, we're basically going to go over it and cover them for the most part. So if you look close at these photos of stalker, trout, or any trout, you'll see that they have like, um, they have spots, like layers of spots, right? Over top of each other and they're kind of shadowed or whatever underneath. This might have some black on it. I don't want to mess that up. So um, we're just going to do a bottom layer and a top layer of spots. I'm just making sure I don't have any black on this brush before I stir white with it. So I just put a little reducer in with this. I'm just using, and before anybody asks what brush I'm using, this is a Patriot. Badger Patriot. And this is an Extreme Patriot. And yeah. It has a 0.3 on it. I think I converted my 
my other Patriot to a 0.5, I'm not mistaken, my Extreme Patriot. I have two Extreme Patriots and one regular. I like the 0.5. It never, if nothing gets stuck in it. So again, you don't want to overdo it. So it'll get, uh, you want to let it kind of dry in between coats. Um, if you use the regular Createx Pearl, it's going to take more coats to get the effect you want because um, it's more transparent. This is a, sorry, I don't, I'm running out of plugs here. So um, I'm going to have to I'm just going to have to swap these out for a second. My daughter drained the battery on my iPad. <laughs> Normally, I wouldn't have to plug that in. Whoops. But since they've been sick, it's been like way, like uber screen time. And so basically, like, she, they've been playing like these, um, you know, they play like Minecraft and Roblox, and then she like found this game called Wildcraft, which is like animals where you can get different skins for like wolves and cheetahs, and so she's been like playing that compulsively for the last several days. I'm not a real, I'm not very strict about screen time. I do make sure they do their homework though, and I try to keep them busy with activities, but right now. They're coughing so much that there's just like nothing else they can do really. So um, again, I'm just gonna put enough layers on here till I can, it kind of looks shadowy. And you'll find when you do this, that when you turn it in the light, it'll look more or less um, obvious, the spots. And that's um, kind of, that's one of the cool things about it, I guess. They're still there. They show up more if you turn them in the light a certain way. But we're going to just kind of mute them down a little bit. I need a little more paint here. Just a little bit of reducer. It doesn't need to be... It doesn't need to be super thin, but thin enough to spray it. If you are using a 0.5, you probably only need just a little bit of reducer to get it to go through the brush. Florida strings, huh? I know they do. I know that our 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 fishery does a lot of um, a lot of walleye here. It's like a big deal here, and then trade it out for other stuff. But they do that all indoors. I'm not quite sure how that works. There's some sort of a special way they have to do it because I guess they don't reproduce very well here, so they have to um, stock them walleye. It's kind of interesting to hear about uh, how they do it all, but we haven't actually been able to go to the fishery when the facility was open. And so we haven't seen the inside. It seems like every time we go, it's been closed, but COVID, you know, it was closed. Um, so we can only see the stuff that was outside, which is where they have all the, um, I think they, put, they, they built it a whole big new pond. And I think it's got just like um, pan fish in it. But I'm not even 100% sure on that, but I know the trout are outside in the, um, the big long runs because you can see them. Or pre-COVID, they had like food dispensers where you could take your kids and go feed the trout. It was kind of fun. Just like little pellets or whatever they had, you could feed the trout for 50 cents or whatever. Something to do on a rainy or a boring day, right? All right, so now that we've got that done, you can see that they're way muted down, um, but they're still there, right? So they're kind of covered up and um, it's kind of hard to tell on video, but when you see it flash in like sunlight, you're gonna see it more when it's facing a certain way that you will, when it's facing the other way, just depending on how much reflection you're getting from the light. 
<laughs> Three week battle of COVID. Oh my gosh, you were sick for that long. That is not good. Well, I'm glad you feel better now, at the very least, right? I had to think about what I was doing there. I didn't know if I left paint in there or not. So this is leaf green. I don't really know if this is the color that's going to work because, like I said, when I was doing this pattern earlier, I was using a different kind of paint, but I think this should work. This is like a light green, obviously kind of like a leaf. Um, and I'm thinning it. It's a transparent color. So I'm just going to thin it fairly well. And then I'm going to, I'm just going to do it really super light so we don't get too much green on there. Oh, you know what I forgot? I'm going to have to start over. I screwed up. I got ahead of myself. Sorry. Don't worry about the paint waste. I don't use these colors that much, so it's not the end of the world. I have to re-plug in my iPad because, again, my daughter drained it. Okay. So gold was supposed to go next. I screwed that up. Um, so I'm going to put some uh, regular Createx gold on next. And this is just um, to give it a bit of a goldish hue. That's it. I don't have any better explanation than that. Um, so I'll just do a light mist of gold over it, um, all the way down the side, basically on both sides. This is a pretty transparent gold. And so that's why I'm picking it. So I'm just going to go all the way down the side, both sides, just kind of right in the middle, all over kind of. I'm going to let that dry for a second. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah, this is uh, a tiny clash. And I'm painting um, several of them. But if you want me to save one for you, Keith, I can do that. OK, sounds good, Anthony. Hi. Hi guys. Hey Mark. Hey Joe. Uh, my PSI is about 30, 35 ish, something like that. I don't know. I don't, I don't touch it cause I use, um, I use a, um, a quick disconnect with an adjustable air ho air, um, valve in it. So I don't ever adjust the, the compressor itself. Is this big dimpled? No, it just has like an etched, just like an etched um, scale pattern on the top, like diamond pattern. And then the bottom just has a diagonal etching. Um, but no, it's not dimpled. There might be like a couple imperfections in the blank because usually when blanks come from China, they're not, they're not quite as perfect. <laughs> there might be a couple things that like, you might see like a tiny little divot or like a little place where the plastic is like just not perfectly smooth and that's i mean that's the kind of thing that like striking would reject right probably or whomever whatever pick your bait company um but with the ko's they'll just send it right they'll call it good and send it and it's just it's just basically it's what you get it doesn't gonna affect. It doesn't really affect like any of the function. It's just slight imperfection or whatever. But when you're paying two hundred dollars, you're like, mm, you know, because all the manufacturers like um, it's probably all they did with the with the KO of this is they took the original mold and they just made a few changes to it, made a new mold, and then um, started manufacturing it. They may have used like a different process or um, change. They have to change it like a certain percentage in order to not get in trouble with the patent laws. So you'll see some slight differences in the appearance, but for the most part, they're identical. Um, and that can vary from lure to lure. 
Some of them are not very good and they're not very identical in action to the original. But this one um, is not very cheap either. Like this, this um, blank compared to other blanks is about twice as much. So um, I don't think they skimp too much on the quality, but yes, so they are good. So far, I've never heard anybody say they suck. Let's just say that. And I've heard from several, several people that have had a chance to fish them um, at some length or whatever. So I haven't because they came out kind of the crap time. All right, we're going to go across the top side here with leaf green, and I'm not going to do too much at once. I'm just going to kind of go really super easy. Uh, there's a lot of reflection on the YouTube feed, uh, so it's hard to see it up close. So I want this to stay relatively light. And I'm kind of comparing it to what I did earlier. The color looks good. This looks pretty much the same as the color I used before. So that's probably good. So I'm going to leave it nice and light like that. And then we're going to do just a tiny bit of green on the bottom and the middle. Just a tiny bit. It's almost like a little shadow right in the middle. That's it. Okay, now I'm going to do some pink. So I'm going to clean this out. And we're going to get some color shift pink out. So this is Ceram Coat Color Shift Pink. Thank you for the star, Shane. Go slam out of rock, yeah. There's plenty of those here. Um, so this is Ceramco Color Shift Pink. It's called Flash Metallic, but um, Folk Art makes the color that's almost exactly the same. So it doesn't really matter what brand. They're really thick, kind of. So um, it's a craft paint. It's not really intended for airbrushes, but it works fine. So just put some reducer in with it. I put too much. Hang on. I don't want too much because I don't want it to spider everywhere on me. It's kind of hard to see this stuff when you spray it over a light color. And it's easy to overdo it and then have the paint start to spread from the air pressure. Um, but I like using a lot of air because I'm a weirdo. That's just how I am. I don't like turning it down to air speeds that make your needle dry out and then clog your airbrush. So I'd rather just blow it through with 30 PSI and control how much comes out by my um, trigger, my trigger control, and then how much I move the airbrush instead of sitting in one spot. <laughs> All right. So you guys are funny. Okay. So all I'm doing is going from the midsection forward and coming to a point, stopping right about here, and then I'm going to go to the back, from the back section back about halfway. And I'm just kind of starting farther away and then getting closer. This stuff is kind of thick and you don't want to overdo it, so be And like I said, you have to be really careful. You don't overdo it. If you overdo it, it'll start to spider everywhere and the colors will just start to spread <clears throat> in those little grooves. They'll just start shooting out into the grooves and then um, it'll look all messy and bad. So just very, very carefully, a little at a time. And I'm, the reason I'm just going from the, the joint out is just because it's, I don't know, it seems the easiest way for me to do it. And then I can kind of angle it in the joint a little bit. 
not a big deal, but this isn't like flat. The inside joint of these, it kind of curves in like a wooden bait almost. Not that all of them are like that, but well, most of the wooden ones do curve in like that. Okay, and then aside from the side of this, we want to get the cheek too. Okay, so I'm just going to go kind of freehand along the jaw, the jawline on the gill plate here. It doesn't have to be anything um, stenciled or perfect, just freehand. In this case, freehand might be better because it doesn't look, the, on the fish, it doesn't necessarily look. You could use a little bit of a texture stencil on it if you wanted to, but it might end up looking more unrealistic than it does realistic. So it could work if you, if you cut a stencil properly, but. I don't know that it's necessary. I don't know. This might look just as good. So I'm just continuing to go over that stripe and I'm getting it darker in the middle and then kind of letting it come to like a point at the end almost where it tapers off basically. So dark in the middle and then fade out. So that's pretty good, I think, right there. I'll probably go a little darker on the cheek on this one. But like I said, I'm doing it in um, a little at a time, so I don't overdo it. <clears throat> so I'm just aiming, kind of pointing it towards the face and to avoid to get like a, you don't wanna get a lot of overspray on the body. Just keep it kind of towards the cheek area or whatever. Sometimes when you use more air, it'll help dry your paint as you're painting too. And I know that sounds stupid, but it works. It's like a built-in air, air, air dryer, but it does give you some to dry. So you might have to clean your needle like every so often. So I'm just gonna kind of flip, flip, see if they look about the same. And I think we're good. So I'm gonna make sure that this is as dark as I want it to be on both sides. And so our pink is done, that's it, okay? So I'm gonna clean that out. Um, I'm just using a water bottle here to spray. Share the feed if you can, guys. I appreciate shares. And then I also turned on the discount code for tonight, so if there's something you've been eyeing on my page, on my website, I have some nice stuff in stock that I did this spring, so well, this winter so far. Uh, and there's lots of blades and jigs and um, plastics. I have a bunch more jigs that I have to get skirts on. I'm trying to learn how to wire tie, but I have very little patience for it. So I haven't decided if I'm actually going to do that or not. Um, I really don't want to. I have to tell you, I don't know if it's worth my time. I know that a lot of people prefer, I don't know, everybody prefers wire tie, but it is, it's not fun. It's not fun at all. I don't like it. Okay. So I'm going to do, I'm thinking, give me a moment, please. I don't really want to do any moss green because I think it's too dark. So I'm going to go back. First, I'm going to do my black spots and then I'm going to go back to my moss or my leaf green for this stalker trout. I think I need to stick with the, the lighter colors because I think it'll look a little bit better that way. Almost went in the ditch. Ah, yeah, cabin fever too. I like the snow, but having everybody be sick that's not so much because my kids would have loved to play in it, but it was really super cold and they were sick. So I'm going to do the same stencil, but I'm just going to do it in like patches. I'm going to do random patches. 
So I'm not going to just plow over it with all the dots. I'm just going to like place them around randomly instead. So I'm um, just kind of moving the stencil around, doing a couple here, a couple there. I want to need to wipe my needle off here real quick. Okay, so that might come out. And it comes out kind of fast after you wipe your needle off, so be careful you don't. I've made that mistake a lot of times. You clean your needle off and then you forget that like the paint's going to come out fast. And you're like, oh, crap. As, mu as many times, like even when you know that you're going to make these mistakes, you still do it. It still happens because you, you forget. You get thinking about something else and you're not paying attention. And then all of a sudden it's like gushes everywhere. And you're like, oh. Yeah. I'd like to say eventually you learn not to make these mistakes anymore, but that's not necessarily the case. Not always. Or my favorite is like, I'll get, I've done this more than once. Like I'll have a big swim bait that I'm painting up for somebody that they sent me. And like, I'll wrap the whole thing. And if you've ever done big swim baits, you know that it takes forever to get that netting straight. And you have to use like 25 clips all the way around it to get it on straight. And then I'll realize I never put like my base color down that I want to paint the scale on top of. And I have to take them all off and redo it. And it's so bad. <laughs> and I'm like, how? How? Do, and I've done that so many times. It's like I just get so ready to start, and then I totally forget that I have to do one one step before I start painting, start netting. Anyway, so frustrating. Okay, so this is just I'm just doing this little by little. So stay with me. Be patient, friends. It'll look bad when I'm done, I promise. I actually did this pattern once this morning. I didn't like it, and so I painted over it and started over because I think it was too green, and I was trying to keep it more natural, but it's super it's easy to overdo it. So I scratched it and started over, and it turned out much better the second time. Usually I, I can figure out what I did wrong the first time, and I only have to do it twice. And then I'm good. Okay, so that looks pretty good, I think. Okay, so there we have the dot pattern. Okay, so they're on top and they're below. And I'll do the other side real quick. River to see S waiver. <laughs> no patience for wire tie jigs. I just don't want, I don't know. I just, it's like, I think about my time and whether it's worth my time. I mean, store-bought jigs generally don't come that way, so, and people buy store-bought jigs all the time. So what, what's the appeal? The wire tie is one stay on forever, but what if you want to change your skirt? Is it really better? I don't know. I am meaning to pull you guys. Is it better? Is wire tied always better? Do you like wire tied, or is it overrated? You tell me what you think.
okay. Again, I'm just doing, um, so I did my, uh, this isn't charging right. I'm going to lose my iPad because it won't charge fast enough. Oh, well, if I lose it, I lose. I'll have to go faster, I guess. So I'm just doing some spots over the shadow spots. So I'm giving it a layered appearance a little bit. Okay. Let's call that good for now so I can move on. I'm going to do some brown or some um, more green now, and then we're going to do a brown fin. Why is that turning and turning and turning? I don't understand. So this is leaf green again. I'm just going to darken up the top a little bit and do the spine. And then I'm going to, I might put some moss green on there just to darken up the spine a little bit. Um, or I might just use sepia, which is brown. Um, and just, yeah, that's probably what I'll end up trying first because this is bright and I don't know. <laughs> We're going to go across the face here too with the stencil. Um, I made a stencil. It's for the face. It looks like this, but I'm going to make it bigger. So I'm going to trace it on here. And I'm going to make a bigger version of it. Sort of. Okay. So I'm going to grab a scissors from down here. It's a baby kid. It's a kid scissors. And I'm going to cut this card. It does not have to be a super great straight pattern either. It can just be kind of rando. And I'm going to take this card and I'm going to put it um, like, wait, what am I doing here? Hang on. I, I need to think for a minute. Okay. We're going to line up this long line here. Okay. Right like that on the face and we're just going to give it like that dark pattern on the by the eye and this is kind of what they look like in real life so and i'm gonna have to come back probably and darken that with a uh a little bit of brown so i'll just go over it with brown um when i darken the spine but that's what it looks like okay so let me do the other side real quick Now, Ryan's trying to help me with wire tie jigs. I'm, I'm not a very good student. I don't have the patience for it. I've got too much, too much stuff to do, and so I just don't have the patience for it. It's, it's tedious. Okay, let me get rid of this screen, and I'm going to um, put some brown in here, and we'll see if we can finish this up. Uh, if you want a different skirt, tie it on a different jig. Huh. How many people do you think are going to do that in a boat while they're fishing? They're going to take out some pliers and they're going to rewire tie a jig. Do people do that? <laughs> I'm just saying. I'm just saying. Nobody here has an opinion. They don't want to help me understand. Did you know that if you guys comment more and participate more on my feeds, it, it helps with the algorithm for Facebook and pushes my posts up in the algorithm? I need to ask more questions during my feed. I need to encourage you all more to participate like it's kindergarten. Okay. <laughs> Oh, 
boys and girls. Okay, so I'm stirring up some reducer and some um, sepia, which is a lovely color. Yeah, the other camera, it's YouTube. I have a webcam up here, and then I have my phone down below it. And so I have both. During the football game, but what if you want to change colors while you're on the lake? Right? I'm, I don't like how this is not covering very well and somehow I must have touched the top of this because it's um it's got a smudge on it but I'll fix that later it's not a big deal so I'm going to line this stencil back up right here and I'm going to just spray a little brown over this to darken it up a little bit so I'll just line it back up and I'll do some sepia just to darken it up a little bit give it a little bit of a um muddier color to it kind of like so a little bit muddier and i'll let the nose kind of follow suit there and i'm going to go around the eye just a little bit this is super thin sepia and so it's going to run on me so i'm kind of taking my time here If the sepia is very transparent, so you got to be careful not to overdo it. It'll start to run, so that's what it looks like now. Okay. Cut off that jig and tie on another jig. Oh goodness. Okay, so I guess I guess switching jig skirt colors while fishing is not something most people do. You just bring 400 jigs with you every time you go and you never just think, oh, I didn't bring that color. Let me switch it real quick. See, I, I fish like for fun. I'm not like a serious, serious person fishing. I fish with, you know, the fam. That's it. Since it was getting a little annoying with this, so I'm just kind of started free, like freehand coloring this in a little bit. And um, if this is getting too brownish, I might have to adjust it a little bit, but I'll do that later. I don't want to, it'll take forever to figure out, and I'll end up putting more brown into it. It'll just take forever. And we're not going to do that. So let's do a fin, and then we'll put some eyeballs on. Okay. So I'm going to use the fin that this stencil came with, which is this one right here. Kind of looks like a trout fin. Okay, I'll put my thumb behind it so you can see the shape. Okay, so that's the fin that I'm going to use. And I'm going to use this brown. I do, Chad. I have the KOs. I don't stock the brand name. Okay. And the KOs are good because we use them all the time. Okay, so I'm just lining this up right behind the gill plate here. Sorry, it takes two hands to show you this. So I'm just lining it up right behind the gill plate, and I'm making it mainly horizontal, okay? Maybe a little up tilt to it, but not much. And I'm just going to shade along the top edge of the fin stencil and go all the way around it. Darker on the top, darker by the gill plate where the fin attaches to the body. All 
All right. So there's your fin. So brown fin. And I'll do the other side here real quick. Um, are you guys talking about the rock crawler or the... Or the um, tiny flash. Okay, tracing the top part of the stencil, and then do the part closest to the gill plate, um, and then the bottom, and then go back. And do another layer closest to where the fin attaches to the body. Another layer on the top. So it's going to be darker on, like, it's going to be darker here and on the top of the fin. And then a little lighter down here. And that'll give it a little bit more of a transparent fin look. Okay? So these are the tails that come with these. I'm going to take off my gloves real quick. So the um, just if you're not familiar with this swim bait, this is a bait that anybody can fit, could fish. It's a low float, so um, they cut, they're just below the surface, and then um, you can you can put the bill a bill on or not, and um, they swim differently depending on how you um, whether you have a lip in or whether you have your tail upside down. This it comes with a chartreuse tail, and it comes with um, like a silver glitter tail. And I haven't decided if I'm going to paint these brown yet or not. I might. Um, and it, it fishes different if you fish it with the tail this way than it does if you fish it with the tail this way. And if you Google uh, DRT Tiny Clash, you'll find um, a decent uh, explanation that comes up. I did post it somewhere. I'll post it again on my website. Uh, I don't know. It might be copyrighted. I don't want to. I don't want to screw that up, but. I'll try and see if I can like link a description of how they they um, swim uh, with the different configurations on my website, so you can just link directly to whatever website that is. I mean, you can't get these really. <laughs> if I link it to like a website that stocks them, I'm not giving like my business away because you can't really get them most of the time anyway, and they're $200. So if for the brand name ones. So these swim pretty much exactly like the brand. Oh, you know what? They gave me, I'm kind of, that's not going to work. I got these from Alternative Lures, and he's really great. So I'm sure he'll send me another one. But it came with, like, a big scratch on one of the guys. And I don't believe that they give you any extras when they send you these. I got these from Alternative Lures, but um, most of the suppliers have these. And they're not, they're not the cheapest swim bait blank, but they're pretty good. So they're worth it. Okay. 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 So a lot of people uh, won't use their fingers to put on eyes, but I have some fingernails. So that makes it a little easier to use your fingers. And some people use like little forceps in a, and they do it that way if you don't have any fingernails at all. But I have some. So I can usually do it with my hands. Every once in a while, you stick your finger, you super glue your finger, but oh well. I used to try to do my nails, and I gave up on that finally. I was like, hmm, it's just not going to be a thing anymore in my life. All right, so let me. And the tail, um, by the way, the tails will not come glued or anything. Um, you can just pop them in and out. They slide right in and out. Hang on a second. Oh, I'm sorry. That came right out. They're supposed to anyway, yeah. So they're kind of tight, so you might have to jam it in there. I wonder if I should check these before I send them out to make sure that um, uh, 
Oh, there we go. Okay. You just really got to jam it in there. It'll go in. All right. And then the lip will come. Um, it won't come glued in and I won't put it in. Okay. You just slide it in and out. It comes in and out really easy. And these are really flexible, kind of like a circuit board lip. So they won't break really very easily. And then if you ever need any replacements for the tails or the lips, if you go on aliexpress.com and you put in tiny clash tail or um, tiny clash lip, you'll see you can buy like a 10 pack of them to replace, but they come with two. And then um, if you need a link from me of where to order some more, I can send it to you. Okay, so there we go. Stalker trout. Tiny Clash KO Stalker Trout. All done. Hope you guys like it. Have a wonderful rest of your week. I hope you are all staying warm and safe. And we will see you next week. Take care. Bye.